All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Today, our topic is very important and very sensitive. Please invite your friends and let us share knowledge today together. Always, when we have discussion about anything, I try my best to present to you what the Muslims believe, not what I believe. At the same time, we discuss what they believe. When you speak to Muslims about Christianity, the Muslims, they try to present to you what they believe, claiming that this is what we believe. Which means, a Muslim, when he speaks about Christianity, trying to fight Christianity, he will not take what we explain the Bible or how we understand it. He try to present to you a different image about what the Bible says and suddenly he became a scholar in it trying to present to you something he don't even understand not even his book he understand there is a guy actually he just posted in one of my YouTube a claiming that Christianity is a copy paste of old mythologies and he's a Muslim but this Abdul, he forgot by doing that. He just proved that Islam is a stupid and false religion. Because if Jesus, all his miracles is coming from false previous mythology, and the Quran adopt those, what it's called miracles, then the Quran have the problem, not the Christians only. So your claim is very stupid. You just fought your God and just to prove your prophet to be a false prophet. Isn't it your prophet who said Jesus, he made the blind see? Isn't it your prophet, he said that Jesus created from the bird, from the mud, the bird? He controlled death and life. He can heal anyone. So when, when somebody says such a thing, it's very funny and very stupid, showing us that Muslims have lack of intellect. The second they start speaking about any religion including their own and today there is no exception I will show you the same story African people you see we heard Muslims always speaking about Islam as a religion who respect African and Islam actually is made for African and Islam is not the same as any other religion and they try to present to you Christianity as a religion of the white man Which is very funny and very weird You know, I'm a Middle Eastern and Between those who they are blonde, I don't think I have a place the red head still they would think and they they are right actually I'm, I'm from different race you know obviously I'm not the same as they are but Christianity have nothing to do with race Jesus never were said every white man who believe in me he will go to heaven he said whoever believe in me he will go to heaven and all his followers none of them was European the 12 Apostles of Jesus None of them is European. So what is the propaganda behind the white man religion? Today, the African people, they are doing favor to the white man. One day, many ministers, or let us say preachers, who came from, if we can say, the white man land. But remember, the white man land, he himself, he been a person who became a Christian because a Middle Eastern man who came to him and present to him Christianity So the white man is not the origin of Christianity and they are just a followers as many followers and later Some of the white men they went to Africa and They preached the gospel and they were able to or successful to convert many people to Christianity but before that still the ones who was able to go or reach Africa long before the white man come it was people who they are Christians from the Middle East as an example country like Ethiopia a huge country like Ethiopia 
no was able to be introduced to Christianity not by a European man same as Egypt not by a European man actually in India there's a church um, it's an Orthodox Church and the one who went there to teach Christianity is not a European man so those are the earliest Christians in the world and they were not European the first city who accepted Jesus as God and the first church announced to be church, it was the city of Antioch. And this is not really, uh, uh, you know, this is in, the, in Asia, this is not in Europe. Antioch simply is a city in Syria and now it's occupied by the occupation of the Ottoman, the Turkish. So Christianity never was and never been the faith of a color not the white man not the black man not the Asian man for everybody in the same time you will see that the Muslim they try to fabricate stories making it as Christianity was bad to the black but that's absolutely false when a Muslim he speak to a black person he said to him, do you know what the white Christian do to you? The white Christians did to you? Who do you mean exactly by the white Christians? The KKK? Those are not Christians. Anyone who want to do something, he have to do it based on the teaching of Jesus. Then he can be called Christian. Anyone who do things have nothing to do with the Christianity. You can call him whatever you want. A Muslim who practice Islam is a Muslim. A Muslim who don't practice Islam, he's a Muslim by name and he's a fake Muslim. As simple as that. Today our topic about the African to clear things out for the Muslims and to prove from their own mouth and their own explanation and their own interpretation that Islam is nothing but a racist cult is not even religion if you remember there's a hadith actually let me show you the story the question the answer the explanation made by Muslims in the front of your eyes this is an Islamic website it's called aboutislam.net Question <clears throat> Are black people going to hell according to Islam? The question is made by a Muslim. The date is February 20, 2017. Assalamu alaikum. And by the way, many people, many naive people think that the greeting of Assalamu alaikum is Islamic. That's absolutely false. That is one of the hijack of Muhammad. If you go and live between the Jews, you will see all the Jews they say Assalamu alaikum. That is the greeting of the Hebrew have nothing to do with Islam But because Muhammad is a thief he always steal what he like it to be part of his cult to deceive you When the angels came to Mary they said to her the same greeting Peace into you Mary When the angel came to Muhammad and you can read the story for you they forgot even to say to him assalamu alaikum and you need to ask yourself why first time the angel come to Muhammad yet but he don't say to him assalamu alaikum because at that moment this sentence was not part of Islam yet Muhammad did not meet the Jews yet he did not learn from them this greeting later he start using it assalamu alaikum my sister my sister told me that some Arab believe that all black people will enter hellfire I want to clarify this this issue she said that there is a hadith stating so and here is the reference Ibn Hanban narrated reported that the effects state that God created the white race the white race from the right shoulder of Adam from Adam right shoulder and he created the black race from Adam left shoulder then decreed that those from the right shoulder of Adam will enter heaven and those on the left 
enter hell and here is the reference according to the question and remember this is a question made by Muslims and it's going to be explained to us by Muslims and this is what is important about this topic we are not stating our own understanding for this the Muslims they are going to give us their understanding so please read with me carefully <clears throat> now here is the answer Salam dear Khadija the woman her name the one who's asking the question her name is Khadija thank you thank you for your question and for contacting ask about Islam this is the name of the website which is run by scholars supposedly before explaining the hadith we first have to acknowledge that this does not have to do have anything to do with white or a black race so this is have nothing to do with the black race or white race okay let us see why if this is so where is the mention of other race such people from india and china and uh, uh, other neither uh, white or black nor black so here the abdul is trying to be smart okay well if the hadith is about race then why it does not mention people from india people from sri lanka people from asia <laughs> the answer is very simple muhammad he made it so clear if you are, if you have a dark color you are created to go to hell asian who don't have dark color they are not white men are not I mean, it's not about race, but it's about color more than a race. Whoever is black, because the black people are not one race. And the black color is not the same. There are some, they are very dark in color. There are some, they are lighter, etc. So the, the verse here, the hadith here is so clear. Whoever have dark skin, he will go to hell. Whoever have light skin is going to go to heaven. As simple as that. And because Muhammad did not really live between Asian, neither between Indian but he saw black and he saw the Roman remember Muhammad he used to do business trip to Syria at that time it was occupied by the Roman and this is why he asked his followers to go and attack the Romans so they can get the blonde girls they can kidnap them and rape them so in the word of Muhammad there is the black there is the white and the Arab here they will explain to us many Arab are dark complexion themselves such people of Sudan that's a big fat lie people of Sudan are not Arab Sudan is in Africa and later the Muslims invade that country and long after they start speaking Arabic what this have to do with the Arab since when even Egypt is an Arab Egypt is not an Arab country even Syria not an Arab country in the time of Abdul Malik ibn Marwan the caliphate abdul malik ibn marwan he made an order to change the language of syria from aramaic to arabic so until the time of abdul malik ibn marwan all the the the, the islamic government books a record is written by aramaic and you can go and check it out yourself so when they lie to you they say to you as an example arab are mixed colors an example is Sudan secondly Arab is not an ethnic Arab is anyone who live in the desert of what it's called Arabia which is which is a word mean desert you see <clears throat> stupidity versus knowledge there is many people think that Arab are ethnic they are not let me give you an example Uh, give me a second to open a website <clears throat> I'm going to show you just an example let us see
All right. This is an organization which is for all the Arab countries which is exist today. And remember, they are the one who call themselves Arab, but in fact, none of them is an Arab. If we go and look at the images of those people who will appear in this website, we will notice that none of them share any feature with the other person. Let us look for some pictures. <clears throat> I'm trying to find you some pictures of all right look at this picture how funny it is this guy is wearing Arabian clothes What this guy have to do with this guy, with this guy, with this guy, with this guy? I did not even show you anything yet. You will notice everyone is coming over, obviously, from different ethnic group. If we go, and do a little more search. <clears throat> this is the king of Saudi Arabia. Uh, let us see. I'm trying. I don't know why I went to Twitter suddenly. I don't want to be there actually. Uh, they have a Twitter on the top. So I did search. Uh, give me, give me a second. Hold on. I'm just trying to make my idea clear for you. Let us see. All right, this is an example. This one here is the king of Saudi Arabia. This one here is the king of Jordan. This one here is the president of Egypt. And this one, I think, uh, I'm not sure who is this guy. Maybe uh, he passed away before, and I'm not sure really. I don't recall his uh, his face. Uh, maybe Algeria, or I'm not sure. Morocco, king from before. But anyway, do you see any really uh, any similarity in the ethnic group between them? This guy is an Egyptian. Egypt is in Africa. This guy is a Saudi, and this guy is the king of Jordan. And if we keep going all over, we will find that none of those who they are, kings or leaders of those countries, they even look any even close to each other. However, you will notice that those who they are in Africa, obviously they are close to be look like African or they are totally as African. Let me show you here. This is more close. Actually, you know what? I will go over to the big picture if we can get it from there. Yeah, look like this is pictures for what they call them Arab leaders. You tell me who is the Arab there. Tunisia. 
This is Morocco and his wife, the king of Morocco, the president of Tunisia and his wife. Al Qazafi, uh, uh, the king of uh, Qatar and his wife, or one of his wives. The king of Jordan and his wife. The prince of Qatar and his wife. Uh, the president of Mauritania and his wife. Uh, the prince of uh, Emirat, you know, <coughs> uh, Dubai, uh, and one of his wives, <coughs> which is actually uh, the 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 daughter of the king Hussein. Uh, this is the president of Algeria and his wife. I mean, this is enough. Now, do you see any feature those people they share together? I don't see any, because simply each one of them is coming from different ethnic group. The one who they are really consider as Arab, 99% of their blood is Indian. They are not an Arab by themselves as an ethnic. As an example, this is the Prince of Qatar. If you see this man alone without those Arabian clothes, you will think that he is a Pakistani guy. If you look at the map, you will see that Pakistan is just a few hours away in the sea, across the sea, across the shore actually. At that time, it used to be India. So they have very close look to the Indian. Actually, even the clothes they used to wear is very Indian. Actually, even the Kaaba is the same as the Kaaba of the Indian, the black stone, which is worshipped in many in India, you know. So there's many things they share together. Those are the real Arabs, supposedly, the one who live in the desert. But even those are not really an ethnic called Arab. But whoever live in the Arab, Arabia, is called Arab. And Arabia is a word mean desert in the Aramaic language. It is not a name of an ethnic. By time, when those people, they get richer and richer, they start marrying from very beautiful women or in the time of Muhammad, where they start kidnapping women from the Roman and etc. And they start getting the look changed too. But you still, you will see that none of those, we can consider them as dark skin people, as they say to us in the article. Where is the dark skin? As an example, this is the president of Libya, Al Qazafi. And Libya is in the heart of Africa, but yet Libya and Morocco and Algeria, they have a long history of kidnapping real black and shipping them for sale in Europe. Why? Because they consider themselves lighter in the skin and they are not the same as the African, but yet they are African. This is the president of Tunisia. As you see, he is a white person and his wife is a white woman. And the reason those countries are not really black because all this North Africa was controlled by the Roman and the Roman lived there. So they are mixed of a blood between what is called African and the white European man since long, long, long time ago. Same if we go to the King of Morocco, as an example, as you see here. All the pictures present to us nothing to do with African or Africa. Yet, this is the Morocco. This is a land of in Africa. This is Tunisia. This is the land of Africa. This is Al Qazafi. This is the land of Africa. This is uh, the the king of Bahrain. And obviously, even their clothes is different. This is King Hussein and the, the the sorry King Abdullah. And the King Abdullah simply he is descended from. Uh, he claimed that his family they are descendant from Muhammad himself. So I don't see anything about the black people there. I mean, this guy obviously have nothing to do with the black people. If we go and search, there's some pictures are not showing, but I think you guys, you got the idea. But just for a little bit more. This is the president of Syria. I mean, obviously, he is a really Arab. <laughs> he have a blue eyes. He's blonde. He's extremely white. And his ears, his face, his head. I, I mean, all of them, they have nothing to share. You see, when you see an ethnic, People from one ethnic, they share the same features. Do you see anything they share together? 
if we put this guy next to the king of Jordan next to the president of Egypt next to the king of Saudi Arabia next to even some the Somalian they consider themselves as Arab you believe it or not Mauritania Libya Morocco I mean if we put them next to each other you will notice that each one is coming from totally different ethnic group there is no way they are matched in any way in any mean what happened is very simple Islam is religion made by a person who speak Arabic and they made their language the superior to all other cultures and they made Islam destroy all cultures so all those countries who they've been subdued to Islam they've been forced to forget about their language forced to forget about their where they are coming from their heritage and they became Muslims if you go to Pakistan as an example you will see that people they are migrating from India and I'm saying here migration about culture they refuse to be Indian why just because of Islam why the Pakistani they ask for independent because of Islam because they are Muslims and they don't want to be with, with the Hindus as simple as that and then they change their names you go to Pakistan you don't find yourself you are living in Pakistan you find yourself living in Arabia their name is Arshad, Rashad, Muhammad, Ali. Where is where is the guys who they are? Where is the where is the Indian names? What is the Pakistani names? So this is what called Arabization. Islam forced Arabization on you. So everything will turn to be Arab. Now we go back to the article which we are trying to explain. So the first point we prove that Arab is not an ethnic. Arab have nothing to do with any ethnic group Arab is a name was given by the Aramaic for whoever live in the desert simply the word Arab mean desert so if you live next to the Aramaic and you live in a desert they call you Arabian if the Aramaic people at that time live in Nevada whoever live in Nevada they will call them Arabian the Arabic language does not even exist by itself. Arabic language is a collection of languages born of out our Aramaic. Not only Aramaic, but the major, let's say, maybe 90% of the language is coming from the Aramaic. The rest is coming from other languages. So even the Arabic language itself is not exist by itself. It is just the product of other language. We go back to the article. Many Arabs are dark in complexion themselves, such as people of Sudan. And as I said, people of Sudan have nothing to do with the Arab. Otherwise, you have to explain to me how they are Arab, but they are black. And how, the, how come the Arab are not, not all of them black? <laughs> Several of the prophet companions uh, had dark skin, as well as one of the most beloved to the prophet, peace be a plus upon him, Bilal ibn Rabah, but Bilal ibn Rabah, he was an Ethiopian, you liar. That's number one. Number two, what companion? He was a slave of Muhammad. You see, when they say companion, they make it look like he was his friend. But this guy, he lived and he, he all his life, Muhammad, he died. And this poor Bilal, he is an Ethiopian man. He's not an Arab. And he, and he did not get his freedom. Who used to call Adhan. He used to call for the prayer because he's a slave, the white man, the white person. He don't want to go for the hard work to wake up for him in the morning. So they forced the black man, the slave man, Bilal, to go and do the prayer. All of this to present to you what? That Islam is not racist? Let us see. I would like to thank you for the translation in Arabic. I was able to find the hadith you are referring to. And there are different muhadith, which means reporter. And it is an authentic. Take a note, please. This hadith is authentic. Usually, when we read it to Muslim, they say to us, it is not authentic. Anything you, th you throw at Muslims, they say to you, it's not authentic. Anything, just to defend Islam. But unfortunately, your sister misinterpreted uh, either because. It was mistranslated or not properly explained in the book that she was reading. Let me clarify. Let us clarify why the black people will go to hell. 
and this is the hadith they are talking about <clears throat> when Allah created Adam he hit his right shoulder I don't know guys if the text is coming clear to you can you read it still can you read the text please let me know if you can read with me the text because I want to be sure that you can read it there's no point let me be sure let me increase the text size like maybe this is better now all right when Allah created Adam he hit his right shoulder from which he his descendant who are as white as pearl came out and here we will have the problem and I want you to notice with me I want you to learn how to read and how to observe because every letter in this statement count and we will show you how Muslim they get try to get around it and around the meaning so they are as white as pearl came out then he hit his left shoulder from which his descendants who are as black as charcoal came out so now we take a note please that white people are coming from the right shoulder white people are coming from the white from the right shoulder and now i'm going to change the color of the uh, light in here just for to take a note and the, from the right shoulder from the left shoulder of Adam he created people who they are black like charcoal which means they are very dark in color all right and then he said to the ones who they are on the his right enter the paradise and that would not uh, uh, diminish from my do, do, dominion to the last or to the least and he said to the ones who on his left enter hellfire and that would not increase anything in my dominion and this is the reference remember here we are reading the Muslim translation not Christian translation not Abdul I mean this is an authentic website and they are saying this is authentic and the one supposed to is a scholar all right so what we learn from here that when Allah he is supposedly God he created mankind this is how the creation happened he hit the shoulder of Adam once on the right and once on the left when he hit him in the in the right all the white people they are created but that but those white people are unique how unique I mean they are really white they are really really white they are white like pearls and then he hit the left shoulder of Adam and he you know he create people who they are in the color unique how unique they are so black And then he said to the one in the right, you enter heaven. And he said to the one in the left, which means the black people, you go to hell. Now the Muslim scholar, he is going to try to explain to us what is that meant. Please read carefully with me how the Muslims explain this disaster. We have to be careful when attributing information to Allah and his messenger if anyone else write information that is contradictory to Islam then we should uh, uh, tactfully correct them however in Islam no one corrects Allah in Islam take a note please in Islam no one correct Allah and his messenger for his God you see in Islam nobody correct Allah or his messenger <laughs> because they are our source of knowledge wonderful in addition 
there is no one who is really white or black because there is no individual in earth who is as white as pearl or as a black as charcoal that's false that's false there is people who they are really white very very white and there is people they are dark black like charcoal you can go right now and check african pictures and you will see there is people really 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 dark and there is people really 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 white and the abdul here he forgot something proven to us that muslims have a lack of intellect that Allah, he is speaking about who? About Adam. Is that correct? So if say, if you are saying there is nobody in this earth is white and black, in the meaning of this hadith, that means all the story is fabrication for Adam is a real man and the story is about him. Otherwise, why we have to insert the name of Adam there and his shoulder? His right shoulder and his left shoulder. But soon we will notice why the Muslim Abdul trying to avoid this issue. Let us go down. There is no one who is really white or black because there is no individual on this earth who is white as pearls or black as charcoal. Our skin color are either different shades of PG, P, PG or different shade of a brown. When talking about people hereafter in the hereafter, Allah in his book, he said, on the day when faces will turn bright, and the other faces will turn dark. The fact doesn't say turn bright, it says turn white, not bright. Here he continued, chapter 3, verse 106. I have purposely quoted the Arabic words because white was translated as bright. See, it is white, not bright. While black was translated as dark into dark, which is correct since Arabic uses color in many occasions to describe the bright and the and the dark but the verse saying that in the day in the day there's faces will turn white and there is faces will turn black and we've been before in in Ibn Kathir and we saw how the story of al jassasa where a beast will come emerge from the from the uh, if you go to chapter 27 verse number 82 a, a, a beast will come from the ground <clears throat> Let us go there. A beast will come from the ground. It's called Al Jassasa. And this beast is going to have the staff of Moses and the ring of Solomon. And he will hit you in your face. And he will make you black or white, depending on your religion. So if you are a Muslim, Allah will make you totally white. If you are non Muslim, Allah will make you black. 2782. Here we go. Ibn Kathir speaking about the beast which is called Al Jassasa. If we go down here, just to make it fast, not to waste time, we go to the topic. Okay, hold on. with me so this beast he will come and he will make a white spot in the face of the person he will make what a white spot in the face of the person but this white what what this white uh, 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 spot will do this white spot will spread and he will turn to be a white man there will be no believer left without making a white spot in his face which will spread until his face shining white. Do you see it? Not bright, shining white. As a result, 
and there will be no disbeliever left without it making a block a block a, a black spot on his face which will spread until his face is black as a result all right so what we learn from this story that there is racism in the judgment day too in the judgment day nobody nobody is allowed to enter heaven and he is black for all the inhabitants of heaven in islam they are going to be white and all those who are going to go to hell allah will make them black and as you see this is not my interpretation and this is not my explanation we go back to the article Our hadith is no more than explanation for the above mentioned verse. So this Abdul scholar trying to say that the hadith in front of us, the one about Allah created the black to go to hell and the white to go to heaven, that is nothing but explanation for a chapter 3 verse 106 where it says in that day where faces will turn black and white. Therefore the hadith clearly talking about good and evil take note please it's about good and evil human beings which is found among every nation every race and every religion furthermore allah in his book he says in his this self explanatory verse o people we created all you all from male male and uh, uh, for male and female and we made you into nations and tribes so that you may know one another verily noblest of you is in the sight of Allah is the most God fearing of you so the Abdul he's saying for Allah all of us we are equal it's about who got how good you are but this is not really what you just can protect yourself my friend I will go a little bit and show you how we strip it Islam is I'm not going to say the scholar who is talking is a stupid. He is a victim of this cult He just shot Not only his foot his God in the foot because look What he is saying to us here? That the hadith which is saying that Allah created the seeds of the white man from the right shoulder of Adam and he told them to go to heaven and Allah created the seeds of the black man from the left shoulder of Adam and he told them you go to hell by saying such a thing and by admitting that this is an explanation for a chapter 3 verse 106 you just admitted that Islam divine good and evil by color because look what he said he is the one who said here it is hadith is clearly talking about good and evil So you are saying to me, in Islam, if you are white, you present the good. If you are evil, you are black and you present the evil one. Do you see it, guys? This is from their inexplanation, not mine. This is how he said. This is I'm, I'm just using their words. And he is saying that this verse explaining it's an explanation for the chapter 3106 where it says that in the, the day of judgment faces will be white and faces will be black okay is that literally yes literally as you see there's a beast will come and they will have the staff of Moses and the ring of Solomon and he will hit you with the staff of Moses and you will turn white and the ring of Solomon you will turn black so this is literally black and white by color and this is literally about good and evil and this is literally how Islamic understood that evil is a black and white is good and human being being colored by black is a person ready now to be shipped to hell this is what they are saying to me and this is your explanation 
and this is your interpretation in front of my eyes if I try to explain to somebody from those who they are you know they accuse us of Islamophobia and stupid things they will not believe you it's in the front of your eyes this is their website if we assume now that this guy is being honest and he is telling us the truth and this is not about a black and white created in the beginning no this is about at the end of the time I mean this is even more evil and more ugly because you are saying that your God from the beginning of time he decided that whoever going to be black is the evil one and whoever will be white is the good one your God from the beginning of time he decide decide that the good ones they should be white as pearl and the evil one they should be black as circle how in the world can you follow such a cult Any Muslim? And by the way, this hadith have nothing to do. It's explanation for the end of the time. That's false. Because as you see, it's mentioned Adam. Adam. And mentioned physically hitting the shoulder of Adam. And mentioned which one is born from where and which one is born from where the white people they are born from the right shoulder and you know that the right shoulder in Islam present always the good and the left hand present the evil so how you can jump over Adam and his shoulder and make it that this is just an explanationary about what will happen in the judgment day how you muslims accept to follow a religion saying that you know what anyone he is good he deserved to be white because this is what you are saying to me. You are saying to me in the judgment day, when Allah He spoke about the left, the left shoulder and the black people going to hell and the white people coming born of the right shoulder, that's mean the white people by color, you are right. And by being black, you are wrong. You are evil. And this is the reward of Allah. Allah reward is we will be black and white. So if I am rewarded in Islam, I will be white. If I am evil person, I will be punished and I will turn to be black. How dare you to believe in such a garbage? How dare you even to, to publish it as an explanation? How anyone can follow such a cult? Then this guy he continued. Also, Jabir ibn Abdullah said, The Prophet, peace be upon him, addressed us during his farewell. He said, O oh people, indeed. Your Lord is but one Lord, indeed your father, but one Adam. An Arab is no better than non-Arab. That's a big fat lie. This all this sermon is a is a is a lie. Muhammad he never said this sermon. And let me prove it to you. Let me prove it to you. The Muslim they say, and the Quran says, if this book is not from God, we will find in it a lot of contradictory. Correct? Don't they say that to us? In this sermon, they try to say to us that there is no people are favored upon people. And even they accuse the Jews to be a racist when they say we've been favored by God. Let's see. 
Let us see and love. This is Quran. Chapter 2, verse number 47. O children of Israel, call to mind the special favor which I bestowed upon you and prefer, preferred you to all others. The Quran confirmed that Allah, he preferred a nation. It's called the children of Israel. Let us continue. My friend, if you want to call this person, let me be sure. I think my Skype is on. He can call me. He can call. The Muslim who want to call, he can call. No problem. So the Quran confirmed that the Jews being preferred. All right. Let us continue. Chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. Allah, he preferred the Jews again. O children of Israel, call to mind the special favor which I bestowed upon you and preferred you from all others. All right. Chapter 2, verse number 253. Allah favor prophets upon prophets too. You believe it? Those messengers we endured with gifts, some above others. By the way, it doesn't say that. There's no gift and there's nothing. You know, this translation is false. It says we favor some upon others. We favor some upon others. So Islam always have a favor, favor nation, favor people, and favor prophet. Not all prophets are equal, which is a contradiction for the Quran. Because the Quran says too that the prophet are equals. But here the verse saying that prophets, there is some of them, they are favored by God upon others. This is how Allah is supposed to present himself. If we go to the hadith, we will see that Muhammad, he claimed that he is the best of mankind and the best of mankind are his family and the best of his family is his tribe. And let, let us make it simple. From the best of mankind, let me get the hadith. I will try to find you how Muhammad is proud about the Arab, proud about his tribe, proud about his family, and they are the best of, of mankind. Uh, let us see, hold on. All right, let us see.
I'm just looking for authentic hadith so Muslim will not say I am making things up hold on I said oh messenger of Allah indeed the Quraysh have sat the spoken between themselves about the best of them and they made your likeness as of a palm tree in west land west uh, land so the prophet is a w said indeed allah created the creation and made me of from the best of them and from the best of them categories and the best of the two category the arab and non-arab and he chose between the tribes and made me from the best tribe then he chose between the houses and made me from the best house so i am the best of them in person and the best in them in the house do you see it so Allah is the one who made people are best and less best in different hadith Muhammad he said let me try to find it in English this is the problem you can find anything you want in Arabic but the English story is different. Here we go. I heard Allah messenger saying, Verily Allah granted Eminus in Kinana. Kinana is a tribe. From um, among the de descendant of Ishmael. So the Kinana, they claim that they are descended from Ishmael. And he granted the eminence of the Quraysh among Kinana. And he granted the eminence of Bani Hashim among the Quraysh. And he granted me the eminence from the tribe of Bani Hashim. All of this, and you are saying to us that Allah, He created all men uh, are equally. How? Quraysh, they are a tribe who they are pagan and they worship idols. Why Allah favor Quraysh? Why Allah favor Kinana? Why Allah favor Banu Hashim? Banu Hashim, Hashim himself is a pagan. All of this, and you are saying to the people that Islam teach that there's nobody, and the Prophet he said, black or white, uh, 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 free or uh, or or uh, uh, slave, it doesn't matter. All what matter for Allah is to be good. That's not what it says. All the tribe of Quraysh is good. All the tribe of Kinana are favored upon all mankind. How that can happen? Indeed, Allah has chosen Ishmael from the children of Abraham, Ibrahim, and he chose Bani Kunana from the children of Ishmael, and he chose Quraysh. In different hadith, actually, Muhammad he mentioned the Arab by name. Let me see if I can find the other one. There's a hadith where it says that Allah, He created, He chose the Arab, He favored the Arab upon all mankind. Let us see if we can find it. Maybe in this website, maybe it's going to be hard. Yeah, I cannot find it. But anyway, the hate in front of me actually, but in Ar in Arabic I can find it, but in English I cannot find it, you know. Uh so Muhammad always he speak about that God he favor nation upon nation, family upon family, person upon person, and yet in the speech Muhammad he made as Muslim they claim, he said that there's no difference between a black and white, free and slave. All of you are in the front of Allah is the same. The best of you is the best all for Allah. But this is not what Islam is teaching. Islam is teaching that you are created from the beginning of the time to be evil or to be good. 
just to show you how the Muslim they try to fabricate the meaning of this hadith but remember one thing what we learn from this story here that the Muslims admitted finally that this is an authentic hadith let me go back a little bit where it says that this hadith is authentic Uh, okay, blah, blah, blah. all right, okay. This is an authentic hadith, Sahih. Do you see it? So now we don't have the problem of claiming or blaming the game that this is not authentic and this is not really true hadith. It is a true, the Muslims admit. If we go back here, in order to get the Abdul busted with no question that this is not about the judgment day, this is about since the creation of the man. We have to go and read the following hadith. This is the hadith, which means a speech in Arabic, from Muhammad, about a child who is born in a Muslim family, and he is an infant, but he died. And Muhammad and Aisha, they attended the funeral. Allah Messenger said, is Aisha, she said to, uh, to Muhammad, Allah Messenger, there is a happiness for this child who is a bird from the birds of paradise, for he committed no sin, nor has reached the age when one can commit a sin. So the hadith here confirm one thing, that this person, this child, is really young, very, very young, to the point he cannot commit sin. He don't know the difference between sin and good. So he is infant. All right. And Aisha, she's saying, this, this child is lucky. He will be in heaven now. Look what Muhammad said. He said, Aisha, per adventure, it may be the otherwise, because God created for paradise who are fit for it, while they were yet in their father's lions, lions. Do you see it? This is what this hadith is speaking about. Adam seeds. When they are still in the seeds of Adam, still Allah created you when you are seed where you will go. It's not about sin you would do. Aisha, she think that because this child did not commit sin, he will go to heaven. But Muhammad is correcting her and said, this is not how it is in Islam. In Islam, we believe that when before you are born, Allah created you and He decided for you where you will go. So He's born of a Muslim family, He commits sin or commit no commit no sin, doesn't matter. Before He is born, Allah decided for Him where He will go. And this is exactly what this hadith is saying. That Allah created all the good ones will go to heaven from the right shoulders of Adam. So if your seed is coming from the right shoulder of Adam, then you will go to heaven, and then you are white. If you are from the left seed, or the left shoulder seeds of Adam, then you will go to hell and you are black. Are you guys getting the point? Do you see the connection? Anyone don't see the connection? Who is the Muslim want to call me? Who is the Muslim he said he want to call me? If there's any Muslim have an objection. I want to hear a Muslim have an objection because if you have an objection, it means you have an objection about his God teaching. You see, when you are a child, is not when your destiny is written. Your destiny is written before you are created. In different hadith, if you remember, when Moses and Adam, they have a debate, which is funny. I mean, how Moses even saw Adam and debated him. But Muhammad, he claimed there was a debate, such a debate happened. So he said that Moses Have an argument with Adam. Let 
this hadith. As you see, Musa's you know, accuse Adam that because of him, because he committed sin, he disobeyed God, we are out of paradise. So he said to him, Allah Apostle said, Adam and Musa met, and Musa said to Adam, you are the one who made people miserable and turned them out of paradise. Adam said to him, you are one whom Allah selected for his message and whom he selected to, for, for himself upon whom he revealed the Torah. Musa said, yes. Adam said, did you find that written in my faith before my creation? Did you find that written in my faith? So what Adam is saying to, to Musa is, why you are blaming me for the sin when this is not my sin? This is what Allah, he wrote for me in my faith. So my friend, when a Muslim, he tried to fabricate an explanation saying that in the judgment day, Allah will make people black and white to go to heaven or to go to hell. Even that explanation is a proof of racism because why God, he will make you white before you go to heaven and will make me black before I go to hell. Can't he send me to hell? I am, I am white or I'm black. No, for obviously you just prove to us Islam consider white skin color is a reward and the black skin color is a curse are you guys getting the point the explanation they gave to us is a clear proof that islam even based on the explanation they give which i don't agree with <clears throat> but based on it they prove to us this guy this idiot who is speaking with no shame, who is saying, sister, please understand, this is not about people who they are white and black today. This is about white people tomorrow and black people tomorrow. Does it make a difference? Or what you are saying to me, that Allah will be racist in the judgment day, not now. Allah will reward people black or he will punish them obviously you yourself in the explanation you said that this is talking about good and evil and who is the good the one who Allah will turn them white and who is the evil the one who Allah will turn them black but remember this is not what it's meant only it's about good and evil yes but it's about since Allah created mankind he created them bad and evil. The bad are the white according to Muhammad. The bad sorry, are the black according to Muhammad. And the evil are the black one according to Muhammad. Muhammad wanted to explain why black people exist. How they are exist. So he gave his scientific explanatory, which is black are made from the left shoulder. This is why here you notice the word left shoulder because in islam right shoulder or right hand present the good and the left one present the evil and notice with me here the man who explained this verse or this hadith he said i read carefully in addition there is no one who is really white or black because there is no individual on earth who is as white as pearl or as black as circle. That is even more ugly. You are saying to me that in the judgment day, Allah will make me not a normal black, will make me black as circle. For I don't believe in him. And in the judgment day, Allah will make you white as pearl as a reward. I mean, how ugly that can be more than this as a reward, which is based on racism and based on color. This is ugly. 
It's not ugly to be black. It's ugly to say that because you are bad, I will make you black. It's not ugly to be. It's not. It's not a reward to be white. It's an ugly for me to be a white now because you are saying to me because you are good, I will make you white. So you are connecting the color of the skin of mankind to the evil and the good. If we go back to the interpretation for the chapter 27, verse number 82, where Allah will make every person black and white. So when they sit together, how they will know each other, who is evil, who is good, from the face, from the white color. Then when people trade, which one with one another in the marketplace, they will say, how much is this a oh, believer? How they will know he's a believer because he's white. How much is this or oh, this believer? How they knew he's a disbeliever because now he's black. And when they sit together to eat, they will say, they will know who is a believer and who's a disbeliever. <laughs> so in the judgment, before the judgment day, by the way, this is not in the judgment day even. As you see, still there is a market, people buying and selling. So Muhammad claimed before the time will come, mankind will be divided into race, white and black. White are the good ones, the Muslims, the one who believe in Muhammad. Black is all the ones who don't believe in Muhammad. Christians, Hindus, Buddhas, atheists, you name it. All of us, we will be black. There's a hadith where it says, the one who said the prophet is a black, kill him. The one who said the prophet is a black, kill him. Because this is an insult to the prophet according to Islam. And Muhammad, he made fun of the black people, of their face. And he made fun of the Asian people, of their face. To the point he said the Asian, the Turk, the Turk as the same as somebody was hit by a hammer. His face is like a shield hit, hit by a hammer. Do we have any Muslim would like to call me? Why today we have only like 300 people watching? Where is the rest? Are you guys watching opera? Any Abdul? What kind of religion this religion is? Why in the end of the time? You know, what the Muslims are saying to us that heaven of Islam is a black free heaven. I want to ask any person who is black. Do you really feel that it's a reward for you that in the heaven Allah will make you white? Do you think this is an insult to you? So what does that mean? That's mean that you being a black is an insult in Islam. Otherwise, why as a reward, all of us, when we go to heaven, we will be white like pearls. As this Abdul, he explained in his article. And he is the one who is, or he said, that you being, this is exactly describing, talking about good and evil. So if you are good, you will be white like pearl. And if you are evil, you will be black like circle. This is their explanation. How we can believe in such a garbage. Christian Prince, finally he will turn black and he will find a girlfriend. Because I noticed it's easy to for for uh, for uh, for black uh, guys to find a girlfriend. Me as a as a white man, there's no girls who want to talk to me. I feel sorry now. <laughs> Unbelievable. Maybe finally I will get married. Hmm? Allah will make me black, and the girl she will like me, and will marry me. It's not working as a white man.
what I should do now. I'm waiting for the judgment day. I have to wait all this time until Allah make me black. Can't you make me black from now and finish it? I mean, it's not even fair. Yeah, I'm white. Depend, depend in the season. Do we have any Abdul? What a crazy religion. I mean, this is published in Islamic website to explain to the sister that Islam is not racism, not, not, not a religion of racism. This is how you explain that this is not racism. That in the sight of Allah, equal, but in the sight of Allah, Allah seen us as white and black. Because this is what this guy, he said. Allah, he see the good ones are white as pearl and the black ones as evil as charcoal. Do you see it? Muslims, do you see it? How in the world, you Muslims, you come with this? Who is the Muslim when I explain to us why Allah will reward the Muslims, will make them white like pearls, and He will make the evil ones black like charcoal? Who is the Muslim when I call me? Allah is not funny, my friend. Allah is disgusting. First of all, Islam teach wrong ideas about the beauty. Being white or black have nothing to do with the beauty. There's women who they are black, they are extremely beautiful. There's men who they are black, they are extremely handsome. Same for the white. You can be a white person, but you're not good looking. I mean, what but nothing wrong with being good looking or bad looking. I mean, this is the, this not it's not your maid. You see, when somebody is a good looking or bad looking, you have nothing to be proud about. It is just your, something inherent in your DNA. It's not your own maid. But to make it as reason to consider someone as evil just because he have a black color, that is disgusting. And as you see, in the judgment day, before the judgment day, people, they will sit together and they will say to you, oh, this believer, kafir. Why? Because you're black. Oh, he's a good man. He's a believer. Why? Because he's white. This is the truth about Islam, which they don't want you to see. And as you see, we sit here for hours asking Muslims to call. My Skype is open. Where is the Muslims? The prophet in his sermon, he said, that there's no difference between you. <clears throat> the Quran says there's different. Muhammad, he said there's different. Muhammad, he said, Allah, he favored the Arab. So was Muhammad lying? Maybe that speech he made, it was just for marketing, for election day? Abdul anyone The funny, you know, Muhammad, he said, if somebody is proud about his inheritance, about his tribe, about his father, tell him to go and bite the penis of your father. Yet he is proud about his tribe. <laughs> go and bite the penis of your father. Why? And what kind of a prophet he says such a word? What is that?
all the speeches of Muhammad speaking that Allah he favored tribe upon tribe family upon family and he was from the favorite one to Allah 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 indeed Allah created the creation and he put me in the best group of them so what does that mean Allah created the creation and he put me in the best of them so he chose who is the best he made the best and he chose who is going to be the best then he made them into two groups so he put me in the best of the group of them and then he made them into tribes and then he put me in the best of the tribe then he made me in the, in the into houses he made them into houses and then he made me in the best of them in lineage and tribe and lineage do you see it how more it's clear that muhammad he believe that there is superior tribes superior ethnic superior family superior groups over others chosen by allah so the speech is about that god did not favor anyone upon free or black or white this is a lie because as you see Muhammad he claimed that there's many 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 there's a lot of filtration here Allah created the creation and then there is a groups in this creation and he put Muhammad in the best group of them so in the first creation Allah he made there's a groups and Allah decided that this group is going to be the best Group from the group, there is a best group of all the other groups, those are nations. Then he made them into tribes, so nations are tribes. Then he put me in the best of the tribes. So, from the tribes, or not all of them are equal, Muhammad is from the best of the tribes. Then he made them into houses, so every tribe have houses. And then he put me in the best of them, which means the best of the houses, in tribe and lineage. He made me. Do you see the word that says he made me, made them, made me? He made them, he made me, he made them. He made them what? He made them the best. So what do you mean all people are the same? That a figure of a speech is not exist in Islam and it's a contradiction for what Muhammad he taught contradiction for the Quran for even the Quran confirmed that God of Islam favor nations upon other nations who is a Muslim when I tell me how Allah he favor Muhammad how Quraysh are a bunch of pagan crazy people Arab this are savage and I am from the Middle East and they call me supposedly Arab what is the best about us until now we cannot live in peace until now we cannot even have electricity and for sure we have to be thankful for Islam because everything in Islam since Islam came to the Middle East everything is became inshallah which means Allah is willing but they never do anything they are waiting for Allah to do things they think Allah is the same as Jesus he can raise people from death but Allah never do anything you call the company you say to them my phone is not working they will say to you inshallah tomorrow we will fix it you call second day they will say to you didn't we say to you yesterday inshallah tomorrow we will fix it you say yes you said so he said, okay, inshallah, tomorrow we will fix it. But you said that yesterday, today is to, tomorrow. No. Inshallah, tomorrow we will fix it. What is good about, about, about those nations? You see the funny, they say that the Jews are cursed. The Jews are cursed. 
Can you show me how the Jews is cursed, Muslims? Is it is it the Middle East now is burning, and the Jews are in the beach having fun? Is it Israel is the best in technology? Is it Israel is one of the most wealthy nations? And all of you are struggling, struggling with security, struggling with safety, struggling with economy, struggling even to make bread. You can't even have a bread of your own. You make nothing of your own. Everything you have is bought from somebody, even your weapon. Who is the one is cursed? I remember when somebody made a cartoon or, uh, you know, an occasion about cartoon draw a cartoon for Muhammad the Muslims they decide to be caught the milk of Netherland and guess what happened babies start dying I mean you want to caught them you will not buy their milk like as if you have your own Okay, we will be caught you because you made a cartoon about the prophet. We will not buy your milk and your cheese. After less than a week, the Muslim they felt how stupid that decision is. Our shelves is empty from milk. A little country, little tiny small country like Netherlands is feeding the world milk. And the Muslim decide to be caught the milk. And now they have no milk. So who is the one who's cursed? You are punishing who? You think by not buying the milk of Netherlands they will go bankruptcy? Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? Any Muslim? He would like to have a reward from Allah because remember if you do Call me and defend Islam and explain Islam to us. Allah will reward you with extra versions. Don't you want to get versions? Look like the idea of versions is not convincing Muslims no more not many of them believe in this garbage What versions? I mean how in the world a human being can believe in such a stupid thing? Brother, if you believe in Allah, brother, Allah will give you a lot of virgins. Brother, they are really virgins? Yes, nobody touched them there, brother. Still now nobody touched them? Yes, brand new, never used. What? Even the Quran, even the Quran, let me, hold, hold on, hold, let, me, let me show you something. Hold on. Oh, Lord. Have you ever seen more stupid than this? You know, uh, I don't know how many of you got my book, Six and Allah. You can get it from Amazon. If you look in the book here in the cover there is a verse I don't know how many of you was able to read it who is retrains or re, sorry restrained whom no man jinn has opened their humans with sexual intercourse before them by the way I, I try to be polite when I translated in the translation however you can this I, I did not even you this is not even my translation this is an Islamic translation you can go to the same website we are reading the tafsir and you will find the translation made by Muslims so imagine there's a God he is promising me that he will give me a woman her vagina nothing enter it yet and he say that with the clear words in his holy book 
holy book this is a holy book I mean how holy is that how holy to describe for me who entered the vagina and who did not actually there's a hadith it says that everyone every female it is written over her vagina the name of the ones I'm trying to be polite guys sorry but the hadith is dirty so forgive me please it is written over the vagina the name of everyone will f her have you ever heard of a holy religion like this a muslim woman she called the sheikh and she said to him i'm getting older and i am worried that nobody will marry me because in the middle east if you are over the age of 20 21 obviously now you are a grandma Muslim men, they follow the steps of the Prophet. They marry six years old girls. So she is saying to him, I'm worried that I will not get married. I'm getting older. The man, he wanted to make her feel better. So he told her what the Prophet said. He said, sister, don't worry. The Hadith said, the Prophet said, that it's written in every vagina, the names of the men will F it. What? Written in the name of a vagina, of every vagina, the names of the one who will if it? Any Muslim? Maktubun ala al farji ismu nakihi. It's written in the farj. The name of the one who will if it. What do you say? Hmm? Any Muslim have a comment? I don't know. Lately, we are not getting any Muslim. And this is my friend how Allah explained to us how he created the black and the white from the shoulder of Adam and the reason in Islam according to Islam for us as mankind to be white and black it's because Allah decided to, de to give a definition for the good and the evil and to make it easier for recognition so the black ones in Islam present the evil one and the good ones in Islam present by the white one. And for sure this is garbage and this is cannot be true. It's false. People are good or bad, have nothing to do with their color. There's criminals from every race, every color, every language, every ethnic, and this is all is garbage. Don't ever believe in such a cult. Because based on this, based in the interpretation this Muslim he gave to us, that Allah decided to clearly, he's talking about good and evil. And he is saying that the white one is the good and the black is the evil. Even if they want to say this is about the judgment day, that is not a good ethic to teach to your children. How you say that Islam does not differentiate between white and black and then you say to your child if he's black You say to him don't worry my son when one day Allah will make us all white. Are you going to say that to him? Be honest with me Muslims are you going to say to your sons if you are an African Are you going to say to him this the explanation here that in the judgment day Allah will make us all white?
Who is a Muslim would like to call me? Anyone? Who is a Muslim would like to call me? Imagine you say that your children's that hey children's let me tell you something my friend my sons my daughters one day Allah in the judgment day he will turn all the Muslims white like pearls and all the kuffar black like charcoal dad but we are black yes uh, but in the day of before the day of judgment Allah will make us all white Allah but but why Allah will do that I mean what's wrong with us being a black is that bad if it's not bad in the sight of Allah to be black why he decide to make the evil one black and the good ones white anyone can tell me Why Allah he cares so much about the color of the believer and the color of the disbeliever And why he favor that the one who will be a believer he will be white like pearls And why he mentioned the name of Adam and the shoulder of Adam and the right shoulder and the left shoulder Why he claim that whoever created from the left shoulder of Adam He is the seed of evil and he will be black as you see in the front of you and as you see the Muslims admit here that this is an authentic hadith the game of being weak is not working no more this is authentic any Muslim And I have really, I am angry from this hadith because, I mean, why Allah don't make me wake up tomorrow and make me black right now? Why is waiting until the judgment day? I want to be black. I mean, come on. If we ask Allah, is a Christian prince is good? He will say he's evil. Okay, as long as the evil ones are the black one according to Islam. Make me black. I want to be black. Any Abdul? I'm black in your book. <laughs> That's good. Uh, you know, first time I went to see uh, Osama Dakdok. You know Osama Dakdok, right? He's from, from Egypt. So I went, he was in the church, and uh, a lady, she welcomed me outside, and I told her I'm here to see Osama. And uh, I entered the room, and Osama, he looked at me, and, you know, he was looking like, who is this guy? And then the second I start talking, he said, CP, this is you? I don't believe you look like this. <laughs> he was scared to death. Unbelievable. I go in the elevator. I say, good morning. Nobody answer. People are scared. Terrified. I look exactly like a terrorist. Any Abdul? But, you know, I have to be honest, I look like a professional terrorist, not anyone. <laughs> ah. Any Abdul here? <clears throat> anyone? You know, the, the funny, the funny, uh, they send me, uh, one of you, he made some T-shirts. You know, T-shirts? inspired by my talk and the t-shirt 
you can get it from that guy. I don't know who is the one is saying those shirts. It says any Abdul. I mean, my statement became so famous to the point we cannot find Abdul, first of all, and because we keep repeating it. When we are going to find the Abdul, who is the Abdul is willing to call us? Anyone? After we close and we finish our broadcast, the Muslim, they will say, this guy is a liar. He know nothing. He understand nothing. We stay here for hours and hours, keep repeating. Any, I'm, I'm thinking to record like a, 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 a audio file saying any Abdul in the background. So who is a Muslim or Muhammad and is willing to call us? My friend, brothers, sisters in Islam, if I now convert to Islam, do I have a promise from Allah I will turn to be white? Can you promise me, please? I cannot wait, brother. Brother, how I know for sure that I will turn white when I convert to Islam? I mean, if there is a symptom, are we going to turn? Okay, hold on. If we go in the if we go in the story here, just to show you how crazy Islam is. When this beast come and look at this beast, guys. Did you see the beast? Look at this beast. Muhammad the thief, he is stealing something from the book of Revelation, but always because he's a thief, he turned it upside down. He said, <clears throat> the, beast will, the beast will come, the beast will emerge from the earth, which will be the staff of Moses and the ring of Solomon. So this guy, you know, he will have the staff of Moses and the ring of Solomon. <laughs> A genie in the ball. And then he will hit you in your face. He will hit you. And he will make your face white if you are a believer. He will hit you in your nose, actually. And then it's a little spot. Yeah, dark spot in your face, huh? Dark spot, and then it's going to extend, extend, extend. Like you wake up in the morning, you find yourself like 20% of your face now black. A week after, like 50%. Two weeks after, you are fully black. True story. And look what it says. And it will strike the nose of this believer. This guy, this beast, is a boxer. Do you see where it? He will strike you with the ring, like. What, 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 why are you, why are you, are, yeah, the nose, he will hit you with the ring of Solomon, with the ring, and he will make you black, and will make the face of the believer white with the staff, and then, Muhammad, he described to his followers, the look of the beast, which I find it fantastic, I hope, one of you is good in drawing to, to draw this beast for us. As Zubayr, which was one of the companions of Muhammad, described the beast, he said, according to Muhammad, for sure, its head like the head of a bull, its eyes like the eyes of a pig, its ears like the ears of an elephant, its horn like the horns of a stag, its neck like the neck of an ostrich, its chest like the chest of a lion, its color like the color of a tiger, its hinges are like the hinges of a cat, the tail is like the tail of a ram, its leg like the legs of a camel, and between each pairs of joint, distance of a 12 a cubit. This is one beast? Are you sure, Muslim, that Allah he did not bring all the animal in the zoo? And he put them inside the mixer, the smoothie mixer, and he mixed them all together and he made this beast. 
I mean, why you don't continue? Why you don't say his voice is the voice of a frog? His jump is the jump of a rabbit. His uh, his teeth is the teeth of a snake. His uh, the tail is the tail of a uh, crocodile. I mean, come on, there's many. Uh, I'm really upset. I mean, there's many is missing there. What about the rest of the animals? There's discrimination here. Any Abdul? Hello? Hello? It's me you looking for. I want to meet this beast. I cannot wait. Especially he is going to make me black. Finally, my dream will come true. I will become I will become a black and I will vote for a Trump. And they will ask me, okay, how you are black and you vote for Trump? Isn't he racist? Why Trump is the racist? <laughs> you see the idea. You know, I mean, the, I can't believe it that always, always those who vote for Democrat, they defend this cult and yet they speak about racism. I never saw someone, he is a supporter of a Clinton and he don't defend Islam. But this cult, as you see, consider the evil one or the black one. This cult believe and teach that women are not equal to men and they are going to be beaten by men it's the right of the man to beat them it is the right of the man to own as many as we want of his slaves to rape them it is the right of the man to control them and have four wives at the same time yet those people they defend this cult let us see do we have any abdul I mean, please, who is Abdul want to call me? It's not jam jam water. It's zam, zam zam water, not, not jam jam. Jam zam zam water is a supposedly a spring of water, but I, you know, the 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 spring the spring of water is already dead. You know, I mean, I, they are cheating. They are putting even the guy, his name Osama Abdullah. He wanted to refute me. He said, "Zamzam water is nothing. <laughs> it's dead. They are they are uh, uh, they are putting like water from different sources in it." Anyone? My friend, I welcome anyone to debate me. Don't tell me debate Ali Dawa and Potato Mawa. Well, I don't, you know, I don't care. Let them come. What I will do? I mean, what I will chase them? I make a challenge to all the Muslims to debate me, and my Skype is open. Have you ever heard? That one of those people, the the guy, what his name, the Titan TV guy, he offered them to come and debate me. The second they heard that this is a Christian prince, all of them they back down. Do you remember? Even he named them by name. He said that he asked them to come and debate me, and he named the guys. Uh, 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 you know, uh, he offered them to come and debate me. Here we go. This is the video from the Titan TV. Let me show it to you. Preface it, Christian Prince. The Bible says this, da 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 da. Christian Prince, you said this about the Quran, but da 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 da. You know what I'm saying? That that's all you've got to do. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's all you got to do so if you're up for a challenge okay come on come on in all right you're really seen i'm not going to be sending out none of the links to anybody if you've got my personal contact details contact me and let me know you want to get onto the show otherwise all you have to do yet again is email me kalam at live.co.uk all right email me i'm sure I'm sure we're going to get a hell of a lot of excuses. Oh, but I didn't know how to contact you. Why didn't you send me the link? Ah, la, 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 la. Well, we all know how you get onto the show, right? We all know all you have to do is email me and I will send you the link. Okay. Away. And then a we week after, the channels that are scared. a week after, the guy he was inviting day and night, the Muslims to come and debate. And then nobody show up. I have seven, seven Muslims, what I call life, seven. But none of them is the of the names he challenged them to come, like the names you they, they claim that they are famous. Let me see here. If you mention the names of the guys something that's gonna be spectacular, right? You know this, do you know this? I know this, do you know this though? That's the question. So, yeah, we got Christian Prince coming on tonight. Um, you know, this guy is absolutely phenomenal, okay? Absolutely phenomenal. And it seems as though, yeah, I, we've asked, okay? We've asked several Muslims at Speaker's Corner. I'm talking, we've asked Muhammad Hijab. We've asked Adnan Rashid. We've asked Ali Dawa. We've asked so many different individuals, yeah, to of the Islamic faith to come and debate Christian Prince. Every single one of them. Every single one of them made a hell of a lot of excuses to say, uh -uh, I ain't debating Christian Prince. I ain't debating Christian Prince. And from then onwards, I realized, okay, my Muslim community are shook to debate people that have a little bit of knowledge. They're so used to debating people that are completely ignorant, uh, um, you know, of Islam, the Quran, the Hadiths mm -hmm. and uh, Christianity. They, they love that. They love, you know, easy pickings. Mm -hmm. Even at Speaker's Corner, I hear it a lot, okay? And this is what, let me quickly do this. Um, this is why I hear at Speaker's Corner. I basically hear this at Speaker's Corner that, um, you know, I want to speak to new people. I don't want to speak to the old people. I want to speak to new people. And when I'm like, huh, you want to speak to new people? And when I see it, I, I say, oh, hold on. You're not picking on, like, young Christians. You're not picking on people that, are you know cultural christians rather than people who are actual christians who are you know really well read really well studied i'm like oh i see the game i see the game it's all about scoring points no one there really wants to debate somebody that actually has knowledge that could actually challenge them i'm like oh interesting interesting so tonight i don't know i don't know um i doubt it okay i doubt it 100 percent doubt it yeah that we're gonna have anybody from the muslim side come on to simply debate or ask some troubling questions to christian prince actually i'm gonna invite you guys okay because i know some of you guys are gonna be too scared all right i know my muslim audience is gonna be a bit too scared so it's okay it's okay Okay, don't worry. Uh, you know, I'm not going to hold that against you. My Sunni Muslim brothers, I'm not going to hold it against you. If you've got any questions for um, Christian Prince, all you have to do is either email me, kalamalive.co.uk, kalamalive.co.uk, email me, or you can simply drop your questions inside of the comment section. All right. After this video is finished, all you have to do is drop your questions inside of the comment section. Preface it, Christian Prince. The Bible says this. Da, 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 da. Christian Prince, you said this about the Quran, but da, 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 da. you know the way is there? That's all you've got to do. Yeah? <laughs> That's all you got to do. So if you're up for a challenge, okay, come on. Come on in. All right, really seen. I'm not going to be sending out none of the links to anybody. If you've got my personal contact details, contact me and let me know you want to get onto the show. Otherwise, all you have to do yet again is email me, kalam at live.co.uk. All right, email me. I'm sure, 
I'm sure we're going to get a hell of a lot of excuses. Oh, but I didn't know how to contact you. Why didn't you send me the link? Uh anyway, guys, did you hear how he invited all those names you mentioned to me always? Muhammad Hijab, Da'wa Batetu, Adnan Rashid, all those who they claim that they are people who know Islam. And yet all of them, they are potatoes who run away. So don't ask me why you don't debate this guy and debate that guy. They will not debate me. They debate only if they knew that there is somebody they can. Let me let me tell you how it is. Muslims they go and they look for someone they knew they can make it with him, which means at least he will not hit them in the nose, not physically. I mean, and he will not destroy the it's destroy their fake career. They will choose someone who do not know anything about Islam or little about Islam. And then they will try their muscles with them. But the second they knew that you are a person who can beat them easy, they stay away from you. And this is what this gentleman was speaking of. They choose always naive ones who don't have education. And they don't know much about their belief and the Muslim belief. And the most important is not to know about Islam belief. Because the Muslims, if you do not know about Islam, they can accuse you with things it exist in their religion. You see, when the dad used to debate Christians, those Christians, each one of them, he was a very naive person in Islam. Until one day the dad he met with Arab Christian, his name is Sharush, and he's Sharush. Sharush, he debated the dad, the dad did not show up for the second debate. They scheduled two debates. The second debate, the dad did not show up. He backed down. Because the dad is not used to debate someone who speaks Arabic and someone who knows about Islam. They always debate someone. It was a mistake. They should not do it again. And this is exactly what the Muslims do. Too bad I did not get the that. Maybe we will get the next day that. And all of them they are copy paste of each other. Like you know, Zach and Nike is start copying the that, and then that now there's a guy is copying Zach and Nike. All of them they are copy of each other. But the third, there is somebody is asking a question. Why in the Quran it says that Allah made no miracle? First of all, my friend, the Quran itself is a miracle. And look at me. I am myself. I'm a miracle. I'm trying to grow a beard. And I am struggling with the beard. I put fertilizer. It's not working. I put even Nivea. It's not working. Then I started reading the Quran. And now, mashallah, my beard is growing. All of them, they are copy-paste. But nobody knows even what this guy is talking about. When Zakir Naik, he says, the reason we don't have a Muslim woman as a prophet, because if she bend over, everybody will look at her ass. I mean, there's 20,000 20, people are listening live, and nobody says to him, shame on you, you idiot. What are you talking about? We don't have a Muslim woman, because if we if we have a Muslim woman, she will bow down, and she will her ass will be in the front of our face, and the Muslim will not pray to Allah then? This is what he said. Bin al Our sister here asking a question. Why in Islam there is no women see the Prophet? First of all, let me confirm to you that in Islam there is no women see the Prophet. And there's a reason for that. And it's very logical. Extremely logical and scientific logical. But, but, but. First of all, if a Muslim woman, she became a Prophet, then she had to read the congregation in prayer. And she read the congregation in prayer, then that means she had to do to do and we do. Which means she had to bend over. And if they bend over, the Muslim will be disturbed and they will not be able to pray. What? 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 And the Muslim like, hey, brother, amazing, so beautiful, the explanation. Look at this woman. Now she does not know what to say. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Astonishing answer, brother and sisters. How this guy got this answer like this is so fast and so good to be true.
True story. <laughs> Do we have any Abdul? If there is any Abdul, once we contacted Zakir Naik page on Facebook and I offered them a debate, they said to me, uh, the guy he spoke to me, he claimed that he is the assistant of Dr. Zakir Naik. And he said to me, well, uh, uh, you know, uh, he have no problem to debate you, but you have to bring with you 2,000 audience. 2,000 people need to fly with me. Guys, I'm going to pay for 2,000 people tickets. I mean, that's easy. I mean, Christian Prince is so rich. Man, I spend like, I spend almost... Uh, what more than a week to fix my roof by my hand because I cannot afford it to uh, to call a company to fix the roof and I will pay 2,000 people to go with me to Bangladesh who want to go with me to Bangladesh so we can meet Dr. Zakir Naik round the trip is paid by Christian Prince do you remember this guy what his name Wael Ibrahim while Ibrahim, he challenged Christians to debate him. I said, okay, I accept. He said, okay, I, he, he wasn't, he wasn't expecting me to accept. So he said, okay, uh, I am willing to debate you. He's first, I willing to debate you anywhere in USA. I said, I accept. Then he said to me, okay, well, I cannot come to USA because I do not uh, have a visa. So why said USA? I said, no problem. My friend, we can do it in ABN. You can even use your Skype. You do not need to come. Who need a visa? Who need the, the ticket? He said, no, no, no. I want to do it vase to vase. You know what? Do it what? Vase to vase. A Muslim always want to debate a Christian prince. He want to do it face to face. I never met until now. A Muslim want to debate me ass to ass. What is face to face have to do with debating me? Are you going to answer me and I will answer you or you want to see my face? What do you want exactly? They knew that this guy is not going to come to us face to face. So we ask for what he would not do. I mean, so that will make us look better. So if a Christian prince, he will come to face to face, we will not ask him for face to face. We will ask him shoulder to shoulder. If a Christian prince, we do not know how to swim. We ask him to meet in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> oh. Unbelievable. Any Abdul? Face to face. Christian Prince, why you don't show your face? My friend, I'm ugly. What do you want to do? I mean, what I show I look like Ahmadinejad in the best in the in, in, in this is after I dress. A suit and a tie. What I will do? Why I want to show my face? What do you want from my face? I show you the reference, I show you the answer. What exactly this face thing is? So now, do we have any Muslim? Last time we received a, a call in Skype from a Muslim, he was naked. He have a picture of himself naked. <coughs> Any Abdul? Once in the chat room in Paltok, I entered, like I saw a Muslim chat room. It was really huge. So I became curious. I want to know what's happening in this room. Why it's so huge? And I went and it says, everybody is saying that, can you move the camera left? Can you move it a little bit? So I said, what camera left? What camera up? What, what, what those guys are looking at, you know? And then I, I click at the camera to see what ca this camera. There is only one camera in the holy chat room, and there's hundreds of people there. And everybody is saying, like, wow, I'm amazing. What is that? And then I opened the camera. I found a Muslim woman. She have a camera next to her foot. Next to her foot. And the whole mad 
crazy people they are asking her to move the camera can you move it to the left can you move it to the right i see a toes they are amazed with her toes my friend unbelievable if a toes of a woman drive them crazy imagine the virgins in the quran what they will do any uh, muslim <clears throat> Yeah, actually, you are right. Uh, literally, I'm begging them to come because, and sometimes I feel like a homeless man, like any Abdul, like somebody can, can any uh, somebody can you give me some something, please? Any Abdul? Huh? Who was a Muslim would like to call us, please? Okay, we will change the topic if a Muslim call us. Promise. Anyone? Anyone? Who is a Muslim when I tell me something good about the Prophet of Allah Muhammad? Anything? I wanna. I don't wanna hear something bad. Anyone? Just something good. Who want to tell us something good? I heard that Muslim used to do charity too. I heard that Muslim Muhammad he married Aisha as a charity. So because she was an orphan. I mean, this is the most funny joke ever. Aisha, she was an orphan. <laughs> so who is Abu Bakr who became a caliphate after Muhammad? She's an orphan and her father became a caliphate after Muhammad died. Brother, do you know that the Prophet he married Aisha because she was orphan? What? The Prophet he married Aisha because she was orphan? And hold on, hold on. Are you saying to me if I see an orphan, which means a child who have no parents, I should have sex with the orphan in order to give her a sandwich? Actually, this is what the Quran says. <clears throat> The Quran says, go and do nukah. Start with the orphan. Orphan? How you do nukah to the orphan? You have sex with the orphan? Look, yes, the brother, this is a charity. But what, what do you mean charity? A charity is to rape a little child is an orphan? Unbelievable, you know, my keyboard sometimes switch to English without without even telling me. Oh, miracle. All right. <clears throat> if you go here, you will see Muhammad saying the following: "وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا تُقْصِتُوا فِي الْيَتَامَى فَانْكَحُوا." Or فَأَنْكِحُوا مَا طَابَ لَكُمْ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ مَثْنَى وَثَلَاثُ وَرَبَى What is that? What is that? Muhammad is making poo-poo. Muhammad is saying, if you are afraid, if you F orphans, you will not be nice with them, then go F different kind of females. If you fear that you cannot be equitable toward orphan, then go and F such a woman seem good to you two and the three and four anyone can explain to me the wisdom of this uh, orphan story here and by the way the word mary here does not exist the word mary is nukah this is not nukah i mean this is not uh, uh, this the word here is used is nukah not mary the word mary is zawaj so the prophet of allah and his God Allah asking us to be nice to the orphan how we sleep with them what is that a charity we rape the you know the second you say orphan it's mean it's a child do we agree correct guys if a person he is a 20 years old and his parents they pass away he is not an orphan 
Do we agree? Is that correct? Same in Arabic. A person who is a man or a woman and their parents pass away, we don't call them yatama, which is orphan. We don't call them yatama. Yatama is somebody is a child. He have nobody to take care of because his family, they die away. Uh, they pass away. So the Quran speak about orphan and we should take care of them by sleeping with them. Okay, how we can sleep with the orphan? You tell me. What kind of religion is asking me to go and sleep with the children who they are orphaned in order to do charity? Any Abdul? <clears throat> and then the Quran make it more ugly. Look, the Quran did not say go and marry a woman. No, no, no. The Quran say, and this is proof that this is not about marriage. This is about having sexual intercourse. Look what it says. And if you cannot be like uh, equitable toward the orphan, then go and of what you enjoy, what you enjoy of women, not seem good to you. Two, the Quran start to sleep with two, not one. And then three and four. And by the way, here a translation is better than other translation. In its other Islamic translation here, they put the word or instead of and. You notice here? It says and. This is correct. Because in Arabic it says wa, wa. Wa in Arabic means and, not or. This is why I believe strongly that Islam never promoted to marry, which having intercourse with four, but nine. Because read carefully with me. And this is a Muslim translation in front of your face. It says, Go and do nukah to F women, two and three and four. What does that mean? Two and three and four. That's nine. If you ask the Muslims, how many the Prophet he have women together? They said nine. Many of them, they agree with nine. The Caliphate, they say nine together. Nine. The early Islam, they used to have nine women. Not four. But because Muslims, there's a huge difference between Muslim today and Islam before. They are disconnected. Many things Muslims do not know today. I mean, they are just guessing. Because Islam is does not have really a good documentation, let us say. If we, if we say what is even the scripts of the Quran, the Muslims, they have, they have zero script. Our manuscript. If you remember, two years ago, they found a piece of leather in uh, uh, in, in England uh, University. I forgot the which uh, Birmingham, something like this. They found supposed it was called historic manuscript, which is a piece of leather goes even to the before the time of Muhammad, and then it's written Quran on it. And the Muslim they were so excited for that discovery. Just one piece of leather. And even that piece of leather does not match with the Quran today. Why? Because they have nothing. They have no Quran. They have no book. Like the Muslim now, the, the Quran we are reading, they say this is the Quran of Uthman. But they don't, don't have the Quran of Uthman. Nobody have the Quran of Uthman. All the Islamic sources is not exist. As an example, they say to you, Sahih Bukhari, what is the most authentic hadith of Islam? Sahih Bukhari. What is second? Sahih Muslim. Okay. Do you have original copy for Sahih Bukhari? No. Nobody have it. So what do you have? They have books written by people saying, claiming that this is what they learned from Sahih Bukhari. <coughs> Same as the Quran. If you have a Quran in Arabic, if any of you speak Arabic, <coughs> let me get my Quran. Hold on. <coughs> All right. In this Quran, in page number A, where is page number A? Which is at the end of, at the end of the Quran in Arabic. Page A. 
All right, here we go. كتب هذا المصحف وضبط على ما يوافق رواية حفص بن سليمان بن المغيرة الأسدي الكوفي لقراءة عاصم ابن أبي النجود الكوفي التابعي عن أبي عبد الرحمن عبد الله بن السلمة بابا 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 Let me translate. This مصحف not Quran. This is مصحف. You know what مصحف mean? Pages. This is not a book. This is pages. Written according to the recitation, riwaya, the tale. The tale, not the book. There's no book. The recitation of Hafs, the son of Suleiman, Ibn al Mughira, Al Asadi al Kufi, according to Asim, Ibn Abi Nujud, according to Abi Abdul Rahman, Abdullah ibn Habib al Sulma, according to Uthman ibn Affan, according to Ali ibn Abi Talib. According to Yazid ibn Thabit, according to Abi ibn Kaab, according to the Prophet. What the heck? All of this is recitation according to, but there's no book. You see, this is how you discover. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I can give you a screenshot. Actually, I posted before. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let me. Let me do this because before I made a, I made a video about it, but I think I posted. <coughs> I post I posted a print in Batterion a page before. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. <coughs> but this is really go way back, so I have to go way way back. Let's see. Uh, let me search, please. Hold on. I will try to find you that image I posted. <clears throat> All right, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are. I'm looking, but for sure it's there. You know, I did not take it off. But give me time. This website doesn't load all the posts right away. You have here we go. Okay, I found it. Look with me. This is exactly an image from the big from the page I am reading. Is it clear? <clears throat> So you see here the word, the word here, riwaya. Riwaya. Like one of you, he says, what is the proof that Muslims don't have the Quran? My friend, even in the Quran they have, it says, this is the recitation, the tale, recitation. Riwaya. You see the word here? Let me make it in blue. Hold on. This word between inside the frame, it says riwaya. And this word reported again and again and again. So all of this is according to the tell. Tell of who? Of Hafs. Hafs. Hafs accused by Muslim to be a hypocrite, to be a thief. To be a fraud so the quran the muslim have is a book recited to them from a guy his name is hafs this is hafs according to hafs the son of suleiman ibn mughir al asadi kufi according to asim asim is the father the stepfather of hafs and he was accused to be a fraud and he is a thief and both Hafs and Asim, any hadith, they report it's rejected because both are liars. So all the Quran is coming to the Muslims based on those. And then, if we ask the Muslims, which year was Hafs? They will say about 200 years after Muhammad. 
Where is the book of Hafs? Nobody have it. It's recitation. Don't you understand? <laughs> Why we need the recitation of Hafs if we have a book? Because simply there's no book. Are you getting the point? So from Hafs to Muhammad, there's many generation. And then from Hafs, from Suleiman, from Abi Abdul Rahman, from Uthman, from Ali, from Zaid, from Ibn Kab, from uh, uh, from the Prophet, all from 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 from. Nobody have the original book of Muhammad. If we have the original book of Muhammad, we do not need Ali. We do not need Abu Zaid Ibn Thabit. We do not need Abi Habib. We do not need Abu Abdul Rahman. We do not need Al Asadi. We do not need Hafs. We do not need. We do not need anyone. Correct. Are you getting my point? This is how easy to prove that Muslim have no manuscript. Because if they have the manuscript of Muhammad, they do not need any of the rest. Or what I need to say from Muhammad, that's it. But because they don't have the earliest thing they have, uh, close to Muhammad time is Hafs. And it was a recitation, riwaya. You see here it says, riwaya. Not a book, the tell or the telling recitation. So, what is the book? Simply, they don't have one. Do we have any Abdul? Anyone? This is why if you read, the more you read about Islam, you'll laugh. I mean, it's it's a it's endless contradiction. Even the God of Islam do not know what which one he created first. The stars, the sun, or the earth, or the trees. One verse says something, the other verse says something else. Have you ever heard of God you don't remember? What kind of God is God? <clears throat> and the Muslims, this is why I say it's very important for you to know Islam before you debate Muslims. Many, this is the mistake many Christians, they do. They think, okay, I know I have a good information about the Bible, so what I will do now? I'm going to debate the Muslim Abdul, for I know how to answer them about the Bible. And the friend, don't do that. Don't waste your time. First of all, if you have a virus in a computer, are you going to install a new software? Or you are going to format the computer first, and then you can install a clean computer, clean clean uh, window, clean whatever. You have to destroy the, the, the virus. And the virus, this guy is not listening to you. Whatever you say to him about the Bible, he will not even listen. The second you start hitting him from his religion, as an example, you know, you know, I, I debated, I don't want to say thousands, if not tens of thousands of people. Once a Muslim, he said to me, <laughs> Christian Prince, not once, many times actually, <laughs> Christian Prince, the Bible says that God created the, the sun in Wednesday. <laughs> How you explain such a stupid thing? <laughs> so the, the earth was without light for uh, four days. <laughs> and he was so happy. I said Abdul, are you sure that this is wrong? He said, yeah, for sure wrong. <laughs> this is stupid. <laughs> this is stupid. I said again, are you sure that this is wrong? He said, I'm telling you, are you sure? Are you stupid? Are you deaf? You are Christian and deaf. No wonder you are Christian. You don't listen. Huh? I'm telling you, I'm sure. And I said, are you sure you are right? He said, what's wrong with you? Keep saying to me, I'm sure. For sure, ask anyone. This is very stupid. This is only crazy, donkey crazy people will say that. And I said, okay, hold on. Hold on. As long as you admit that the one who believes in such a garbage is a crazy and stupid, how you explain to me your, your your prophet saying that Allah created the sun at Wednesday? He said, huh? 
What? I said, well, your prophet said that. He said, this is not true. It's a lie. Prove it to me. I said, well, I don't have the reference right now. Can you give me like a week or two to look for it? He said, ha ha, see, liar, <laughs> liar. I, they told me about you. I told me you play games. I, they told me you don't have the reference now. Huh? Suddenly you don't have the reference. Okay. <laughs> see, you're a liar. So you admitted now that your book is a stupid teaching that, that, uh, uh, that God created the sun in Wednesday. I said, was, uh, but, but, uh, was, uh, you know, so I made him more and more excited. But, but the hadith in the front of me. And when I show it to him, as you see in the screen, this guy he started saying um uh hold on hold on Allah is something crazy no down is no mountain in certain Sunday and Monday and he created things in Monday okay and he created light in Wednesday hold on hold on it says he created light in Wednesday <laughs> and I said Abdul so Allah created light in Wednesday. You were laughing that you say the Bible says that God created the sun in Wednesday. But our God in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, he said, let be light and it was. Before he created the sun, there was light exist already. So we don't have darkness. We don't have darkness. Light is created in your religion, not in mine. Your God, remember to create light in Wednesday. And you are the one who said, whoever believe in such a garbage, he must be crazy stupid. Do you see why I say it's very important to know Islam? Most of the accusation the, that was accusing the Christian with, it was something the Muslims believe in. But because the, that is a donkey, and the other guy who is a Christian, he is ignorant in Islam, so the, that he was able to... You know, look like he knew what he's talking about. You know what I mean? As an example, the that he said to a Christian minister in his debate, not a single Jew believe that God have a son. The Trinity of the fabrication of the Christian. What? Not a single Jew believe that God have a son? The other guy, because he do not know Islam, he start answering him based on the Bible, but in fact, if he knew Islam, he should he could shut up this man, expose him actually, and make him look like really, really a fool. And actually, not only a fool, even the Muslims will go against him big deal because he just proved Islam to be false, because the Quran says, and witness that the Jews they worship a man, his name is Uzair, and they say he is a son of God. So what do you mean, not a single Jew? He said to him, if you search the whole Old Testament, you will not find nowhere the Jews believe that God have a son. He's talking about who? About the Jews and the Old Testament, the book which Muslim accused to be corrupt. But the Quran chapter 9 verse number 30 says that the Jews believe that God have a son. His name is Uzair. And the Christian believed that God have a son. His name is the Messiah. And this is why the Muslims, they choose their target always. Someone he don't know much. Someone is young. Someone he have no knowledge. Someone don't have education. The, you know, they ask you a simple question. Then the second they notice that you know, they stay away from you. <clears throat> the same as Jehovah's Witnesses. The same as the, sec the second they knew that you are a person who have knowledge, they run away. The second they knew that you are an idiot who have no knowledge, they will they will stuck like a glue on you. I don't have Jehovah's Witnesses to come into my door no more. Why? Because they came first time, second time. They learn. That's it. They learn. They listen. Once I got Jehovah's Witnesses, the first day I got two. The second day, they, they they brought one with them, and then the, the they 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 decide to leave Jehovah's Witnesses. The third guy he refused to, to you know he he was so angry from them. It took me two days, two meeting. 
they never come to my door unless it's like they don't know like they are new in the area <clears throat> So when the Dutch he say there's no single Jew, nowhere in the Old Testament it says that God have a son, then the Quran obviously is a liar, is lying book. Do we have any Abdul wanna call us? Mayday, Mayday. Anyone? And you know, Jehovah's Witnesses, when they see me right away, they think I'm a Muslim. <laughs> right away. Oh, boy. <clears throat> Once I stood next to Jehovah's Witnesses. I don't talk to them. But each time a guy he stand to you know like they ask him to talk to him and he start talking to them I get a closer and I start talking <laughs> trying to save the victims you know and then they, they I did it first time second time third time I'm there I'm not going to leave you know I was waiting for the bus anyway <laughs> So they start talking to somebody, and then the guy he said to me, Why each time when I talk to somebody you, you get involved? I said, Is that a problem? He said, No, but we want to talk to the person. I said, I would like to talk. You know, we are we like to talk a lot. You know, we love to talk. You know, we drink tea and we talk. This is all what we do all day long. He said, So you are an Arab? I said, Yeah, don't can't you tell? He said, I don't know, but uh, I mean each time when I talk to somebody, right away you jump and you start asking us questions. Why you don't ask us when there's nobody? I said, I ask you when there's nobody. You told, you told us uh, we don't know. Okay, so I'm asking you. I'd like, I like, I like the conversation. <laughs> uh, any Abdul? <clears throat> wherever you go, wherever you go, always try to be a person who is willing to listen, but in the same time. He listen and his brain is working. Don't let somebody control your mind by, let us say, somebody speak good. Speaking good, sound good. Like, you know, there's many people, they say, I like to hear the Quran because it sounds good. My friend, the Quran is a stupid book. What sound, how, how it's going to sound good to you if you do not know what the language is saying? So you are the same as any Western. You listen to some... Uh, like uh, songs in the in, in, in the Thai language like you go you go you go to Asia Asia you, you will find European person wearing very funny clothes I mean where, where, do you, where do you get this clothes from European they have obsession with other cultures this is the, this is the fact so when European he go to Thailand suddenly he went he's a Thai you know I I, I went to temple Buddha temple and I found uh, a man, he looked like European. So I was wondering what this guy is doing here. And he's wearing a Buddha monk clothes. So I start talking to him. And he starts saying to me, well, I like uh, I like uh, Buddhism because it's not like Christianity. He, he said to me, like, that. he said that to me. <laughs> uh, he didn't know he's talking to who. I said, so why, what, like, why? Why supposedly, what, what not like Christianity? What Buddhism is teaching you? He said a lot of better things. I said, okay, where are you right now? Where you where you where you where you live? Are you here visiting or you are? He said, I live in Thailand. I said, okay, you live in Thailand. Why the Buddha monks don't stand to protect women in Thailand? Why in Thailand, the country of Buddhism, prostitution is all over? I mean, it's mad. I saw. There's a video on YouTube, you can watch it too. I saw a monk walking next to a bunch of girls beating the hell of a girl alone. And the monk, he was just watching, standing there as if he don't care. What Buddhism is teaching you, my friend? Why it's better than Christianity?
when the Japanese attack China and they slaughter tens of hundreds hundred of thousands where is the Buddha's religion and where is the monks and where is the teaching of peace fight your anger you know this the way I see Buddhism it's too much of a religion speak good but do bad it's kind of a philosophy have a meanless you know uh, a girl she come and she say well I feel like I want to burn the book I want to burn a book I feel like burning a book oh you know, you'd like to burn a book because you have a spirit of burning person you used to be a creature who liked burning before they have the stupid philosophy they don't try to explain why by reason and why it's happening today so they try to manipulate the situation of a human being trying to make them the human being every individual as a self god instead of making a building society in buddhism religion all what we see that worshiping king and bowing to god sometimes bowing to god and worshiping king depend who is more strong and I found that there is very much similarity between uh, Buddhism and Islam. Because if you ask anyone about the Buddhist, they will say to you they are peaceful. Well, I did not see really that much, too much of peace. Go and see all the wars in Asia and see what happened based in Buddhism. Say the story, the life of Buddha himself. any any belief regardless if you think it's a cult or it's a true belief if it is have two stand one stand is just let us say speech stand a moral but it's not in the ground any religion do that it's a hypocrite religion it's not true if you are a king and you do all kind of filthy things you will not find one person in that religion stand against that king. Why? Because they don't have someone like John the Baptist. They separate their morality, the band they are talking to who? If they are speaking to a poor, they judge the poor and they humiliate him. The second you are a person of authority or rich, you can do whatever you wish and the monks will kiss your shoes. And this is what Islam is about too. You listen to Muslims, you think Islam is a religion, teach charity, love, peace. But the second you go inside, you will find that this is the opposite. You see, there is people who like to make their grave look so good. Thinking that if they make the grave look good, it's not going to be grave no more. You are wrong. It's a grave. And this is what those religions try to do. They try to make it look nice from outside. Oh, we are people who dress white. We pray five times a day. But then, okay, what is your prayer? Your prayer is cursing others. Your prayer is a prayer of hate. Oh, we Muslims, we know we, we've been teach, uh, we taught love and justice. Okay, but you can, but you say that we sh we can go and kill someone don't believe in Islam and take his wife because this is justice. We can go and rape the woman who is not a Muslim because this is justice. We can force you to pay jizya as a penalty, and this is justice. If a Muslim kill non-Muslims, the penalty of killing non-Muslim is half the price of killing a Muslim. So they speak too much about good. But what they say is not what they do. And I see that the same exactly happened in Buddhism. They speak too much about philosophy. But what they do is totally different from what the philosophy stand for. How a culture can be so polluted to the point we have country full of monks but yet is full of prostitutes. I mean, there's two amazing businesses as of, uh, they are flourishing in the same time. Monks, Buddha monks, and prostitution.
where is the where is the monks what is the job of the monks in this country exactly to ring a bell to pray to buddha where is the one who will help the poor i mean obviously those women they are going into the prostitution because there is somebody driving them there where are you why you don't stand against it I never heard anywhere any Buddha monk teaching against prostitution, standing against it. Same as in Islam. Actually, Islam promotes prostitution legally, officially in the Quran. But Islam makes prostitution only something you can use, women who they are slaves to you to work as a prostitute. Do you see it? <clears throat> Force not your slaves into prostitution if they desire not to do so. But if you force them, Allah is all merciful. The problem I see with Western, they are too much of the outside. Nobody want to go deep in the inside. You see, whatever you want to say about Christianity, Western, they learn this. They are copy-paste in the same as many as in the world. Oh, look at the crusade, but nobody would understand that the crusade never happened until the Muslims attacked the Christians. 600 years before before the date of the crusade not a single crusade why did you ask yourself why it was the muslims who did the crusade first it was the muslim the muslim crusade is the jihad they call it jihad so the christian crusade was a response to the attack they are not the attacker and because of the stupidity Everybody in the world today, they say, do you know what? Do you remember what the crusade did? What's wrong with the crusade? If not the crusade, Europe will be destroyed since that time. It was the crusade who saved your ass. If not the crusade, all of you will be slaves of the Arab by now. Me, myself, I will be only like 2,000 of you. As an Arab coming to Europe, what you can do about it? But because of the crusade, you've been saved. The crusade did not send a letter to Muhammad saying, convert to Christianity or we will kill you. And the same lie repeated all over. Like the Spanish, they occupy America and they force people into Christianity. That is a big fat lie. The one who spread the Christianity, it was monks, missionaries, not men with swords. That's a big fat lie. The same as they say to you that when the American came to America, they killed all the Indian. That's a big fat lie. And just to let you know, in America today, if you are an Indian, native Indian, you don't pay tax, which means they are treated better than anyone tax free they don't even need to report a tax and this is the biggest burden in any any american in the middle east the muslims they took our land they occupy egypt they occupy morocco they occupy tunisia they occupy libya they occupy syria they occupy iraq and now the citizen of those countries, if they are not Muslims, they have to pay jizya. They are not even considered a citizen. Do we have any Muslim would like to call me? You see many programs made by Al Jazeera TV, the Poison TV. And you know, this is why you see this is why I don't, I don't really, I don't appreciate the existence of what it's called liberals. Because liberalism promote false ideas and they support lies. The white man, 
You see the the, the 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 this is why the Muslim, by the way, they use the liberals for their agenda. The Muslims, when they try to convert a black African, they say to him, "Do you know what the white man did to you?" But when a Muslim speak to a white American, he don't say to him, "Did you do what do? Did you remember what you did to the black man?" He don't do that, say that to him. They they mention the story of a white man and black man just to ignite the hate, to open a wound in the in the history of the American. So right away they remind you, oh, you are an African. Uh, do you know what the white man did to you? Yes, he did. You know, they are used to own us as a slave. And then they start to trying to fool you to say to you, Islam is against slavery. But the fact, Islam is a religion of slavery. It's a promoted, it's encouraged in the Quran. I will show you a verse. <clears throat> and I want to teach you how to read and understand not only how to read because most of you know how to read english better than me but you have hard problem to understand the muslim they will quote for you as an example chapter 4 verse number 92 look what the verse is saying if a muslim he commits sin As an example here, killing never should be should a believer kill a believer. Islam teach morality. A believer should not kill a believer, but you can kill an unbeliever. You remember what I was saying just five minutes ago? They make speeches about good supposedly, but their good is evil. I mean, what kind of cult it teach? A believer should not kill a believer. Obviously, by saying that you are saying we can kill non-believers, right? Do you agree, guys? It's like saying a white man should should not kill a white man. That's mean you you are saying that you can kill non white. Correct? Or if you say a black man should not kill a black man, as if you are saying, okay, we can kill anyone is not a black. This is evil. And then he continues saying, but if it so happened by mistake, the only way is allowed to happen is by mistake. Otherwise, you will be punished. Okay. And one soul kills a believer. It's ordained that he should free a believing slave. Like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The Muslim they use this to say to show, say to you, see, Islam is against slavery. Correct. But anyone notice here what happened? I want to see who who of you really he he got it. What is the point of a freeing a slave? Somebody tell me. Is that a good? Is that something good? Or Islam promoting something good? Or this is something evil? Guys, read with me carefully. If I kill a Muslim by mistake and I am a Muslim, I have to free a believing slave what does that mean it means muslims even allowed to own and enslave muslims is that correct is that correct in the top of that it's a penalty not a charity it's a penalty for the killer, so he will not kill. You see, Muhammad is not saying a free slave anyway. It is a penalty. And because the Muslims, they love to own slaves. So now Muhammad, he knew in order not to kill each other, okay, we will make them say and agree or force them to free a slave if they kill somebody by mistake. So be careful. Don't kill a slave. Don't, don't, call, don't call a free man. If you do, we are going to force you to free a slave. But the second you free a slave, the Muslim, he needs a slave. So what he do? He go and buy another slave. It's not like it's going to be empty vacancies and no more slavery. This is, will do good in Islam either way because Islam is a religion of slavery. 
So now we force him as a penalty, not as a reward. And there's a huge difference. Why Muhammad don't say free? Why you own slaves anyway? And Muhammad himself, he owns slaves. The Muslim, they keep reporting for us Bilal. And Bilal, Muhammad, he died and still Bilal is a slave. So freeing a slave, when the Muslim, they quote for you those verses, remind the Muslim, this was a penalty to the person who commit the crime, not a reward for the slave. Is that correct? Do you understand? There's a huge difference between making it as a reward or penalty. Now, who is the one here is rewarded? No one. The slave is a penalty himself. Freeing the slave never been about freeing a slave. It's about a penalty to the one who commit the crime. So when the Muslim, they quote this for you, show them that this is evil. This is not good. What kind of religion saying such a thing? Two evil things here we learn. That we now, we are going to buy more slaves because we've been forced to free a slave and we cannot kill a believer, but we can kill non-believer. And the Muslim, when they say to you, about the white man own slaves did the white man muhammad own slaves too and they are african the answer is yes hypocrites so why they are mentioning to you as an african the white man owning slaves who is the one who captured your grandfather do you know all the african who they are in america or in europe their grand grand grandfather they were captured by the arab or what they call themselves Arab in North Africa, specifically the Muslims. Libya, Algeria, Morocco is the biggest slavery market in the world. Actually, until now, there's tens of thousands of black slaves in Libya. Nothing changed. And nobody cares. You see, I just remember to mention something. <clears throat> Let me find it. I don't know how many of you heard about tsunami in Indonesia. And I was shocked about the number of people get killed. But yet nobody really talking about it. I mean, it's just a line in the news. It's just a line. It's like, you know, uh, uh, what her name, the singer, she uh, bought a new lingerie. A city huge one been demolished thousands of people they die and yet nobody is talking about it and the reason i'm i'm trying to mention this the, the, the reason i remember it because i notice in this world today the hypocrisy of islam the muslims they want to send donation to build a mosque in new york and the mosque will cost them 100 million dollar the Indonesian are poor people and the majority of the population are Muslims. But when they die, nobody really care. Where is the money of the Prince of Qatar? You see, they publish in Al Jazeera TV that there is tsunami and, and you know, okay, where is the money of the Prince of Qatar who is willing to donate everywhere in Europe? But in Indonesia, we don't do anything. Where is the money of Saudi Arabia? Where is the money? What is even the money of the European? Why people don't care? I will tell you why people don't care because those are poor nations. You know, when if a disaster happened somewhere, which is a rich country, the whole world will be talking about it. 
tsunami happened in Japan. The whole world want to sell aid. Well, they they want to they they send the uh, to speak to the government of Japan. We want to send you etc. Airplane is coming. Uh, Japan is the most advanced country and very rich. Why nobody want to help Indonesia? Because they are poor. Where is the money of the Muslims? They are very good in sending some donation to build a mosque to promote terrorism. But when people are dying, homeless, drowning, the Muslims are not there. If you see those pictures, I mean, it's really crazy. I saw the video where the where the Muslims they were saying Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, and the wave is coming, and they are hoping that Allah will help them. But obviously, Allah is that you know is useless. As you see here in this picture, the mosque totally destroyed. I remember before. The Muslim in Indonesia, they said they they show a picture of a mosque was not destroyed by tsunami, the previous tsunami. I think this is the mosque here. But this is was not destroyed because it's made it from concrete, not because Allah protecting it. This one is not strongly built; it's destroyed. I think this is the same one, in the previous tsunami. Actually, I think maybe it was less strong. It's the same one. And now this is after the destruction. This is what is left in the top. But the, the point I'm trying to say to you, there is a lot of hypocrisy around us in this earth. And we as believers, we should pray for those who they are suffering and do our best to help them even if they are Muslims at the end of the day those are victims and they are poor people they need help and we as a Christian we've been ordered to love everybody and really you know I, I felt sad for the Indonesian people when I saw this uh, uh, this disaster happen even I know that okay the majority of the city is is Muslim so what I mean I, I will be sad for every one of them the same I will be sad for any Christian happiness will be in heaven of God for one person is saved so imagine we hear a news about a city is destroyed the world is full of hypocrisy when when Kuwait need help Kuwait is the most rich people in country in the world because of the oil more than 65 countries decided to send their army literally to Kuwait to free Kuwait but that because they are rich not because they love the Kuwaiti people and this is the fact this is the this is the truth when when you are coming from a nation which is your land have a lot of uh, uh, resource uranium gold silver oil you name it everybody would love to help you when you are poor then all the ethic in the world disappear and nobody even will talk about you you know in the Middle East we say two things nobody speak about a pimp who is rich nobody speak about his honor and a poor who die nobody speak about his funeral And nothing change people want to remember only what they think it's good to remember an artist a singer she decide to vote Democrat the news is all over who, who care if this artist I mean why it's a big deal if this artist wanna she have 120 million followers on Twitter I mean why even an artist a singer she have 120 millions follower I mean don't you see there's something wrong in the mind of a human being 
why in the world the human being is even doing this are we following her because she have a high education is that because she is wise we will learn something she is a singer and even her songs is not for free you have even to pay for them the media is full of stupid news but tens of thousands of people dying nobody care who is going to watch you know this is the nature of a human being you know you say, you say to somebody there is somebody is sick we want to go and help him and say to other person or the same person there is party we want to go you want to go and see which one he would like to go why i want to follow a singer what what i will learn from him as we speak today uh, Trump he was meeting with the uh, with the uh, uh, you know rap music uh, rap, rap singer whatever I don't know his name and I said to myself I mean how silly this country is you know I support Trump I vote for Trump but that's stupid you are doing what the what the liberals are doing Hillary Clinton she start asking singers naked women to vote for her and to speak about voting for Clinton and now you are doing the same I mean why are we really going to vote to Trump because of a rab guy <laughs> it's a it's a you know the, the politics is dirty and stupid and but but this is telling you that Western countries is the same as many countries they are suffering from the same issue which is the lack of education citizens are not really educated you can the reason they are asking for those celebrity to be involved in politics because obviously they think that their citizens of their countries are stupid and dumb and those celebrity they can affect their mind and decision so i'm going to call a billy dancer so she will ask you to uh, donate for a christian prince or to vote for a christian prince you will not help this guy or vote for him because you are convinced that he need he deserve the help no but because a celebrity wearing half inch skirt saying i'm going to vote for this guy and because she will vote for this guy you will vote for this guy this is an insult. This is an insult to anyone have a brain. I do not need a celebrity person to tell me what to do. Most of them even, they are bad people. Yet they are the one who will decide for me who is going to be my president. Each time there is an election in USA, you will find uh, ten of actors are involved in attacking. Especially, usually they attack a Democrat because most of the actors, ninety-nine percent of them, they are <coughs> excuse me liberals, and they are exist in two two big cities, which is either New York or in California in Hollywood all of them they are liberals and then suddenly they start making fun of you if you are teaching people good ethic a woman she is a virgin and she is 20 she is the joke of her friends and those TV stations they will make fun of her that is their ethic if you are a person who preferred not to be gay they will teach they will say you are hate hey you know person you who teach hate if you are a person who uh, say I don't like Obama they will accuse you right away that you hate black people they always have a frame to frame you inside it doesn't matter what you do the second you don't agree with them and not only that they teach violence the same as Islam this is why I see Democrat or rebel liberals they are the same they are the left 
the left-minded people, you know, they are in bed with Islam. They teach violence. They do violence. Trump, he won the election. They start burning cars, smashing windows, attacking stores, attacking people in the street. I mean, Trump, he won. We don't see the one who you accuse them to be racist, who you accuse them to be savage. They did not attack anyone, and they did not burn cars. This is why I believe that the left, the left in Europe, is exactly the other face of the coin of Islam in Europe. This is why both of them they are in bed together. Isn't it weird that the left, who supposedly defend the right of women, they try to empower women, but yet they defend Islam, which is the opposite? The agenda is very simple. As long as those guys they don't like Islam, so we sponsor what they don't like. As simple as that. And we use the Muslim card as a political agenda. Oh, he hates Muslims. Oh, he don't like Muslims. Oh, Trump, he banned the Muslims from entering America. He's Islamophobic. But Trump, he did not ban the Muslims. He banned any citizen from those countries, including my citizens, my people. There's many Christians there. He did not ban the Muslims and the same order signed by Obama. It is Obama who made that decision. Trump, he just resigned it again. It's expired and he resigned it. How come nobody complain and nobody says Obama is Islamophobic? I don't know how many Americans are watching and listening today. We have an election in this coming November 6. Please don't hesitate to go and vote. And me, myself, I will be early morning in that day to do my vote. The left, the left truly are evil. They are teaching people even to go and stand in the face of people who don't believe in what they believe. To use violence, to attack people. We don't want another Islam with different 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 name. All, all what the left is about is the same as Islam. We'll dictate to you what you eat, what you can say, what you cannot say, what you can speak, what you cannot speak, what you can dress, what you cannot dress. They dictate to you how you live. We don't want that. It's exactly the same as Islam. Islam, they force you when when you what time you have to go what time you have to come back what time you have to wake up what time you, you know you have time for a prayer you have time for etc and what you say what you cannot say what you eat what you cannot eat what you can dress what you cannot dress islam and left they are exactly two faces of one coin You have to say you like gays, otherwise they will accuse you of hate. You have to say that it's okay, you know, to teach your children to be gays. You have to say, okay, I don't believe in this. No, you cannot. You have to believe in this. I mean, so why you say we live in a free country? No, you don't live in a free country. You live in a country of left-minded people. And they choose the right name, the left. You see, since what they call themselves the left, they took over Europe. Europe is destro being destroyed every day. There's no freedom of speech in Europe. You have to agree with the government in what they say and what they teach. The second you say something you don't agree with, they say, oh, you are teaching something against the constitution of the Republic of France. It's the same. You cannot say something against the constitution. This is the Quran of France. So what, what the liberals, they have, they have a holy book. They decide that this is a book nobody can pass and nobody can exceed. And the second you exceed you, we are going to torture you.
I think the left or the liberals are kind of a curse on America and on Europe for the abounding God for long. And the curse symptoms increase more you stay away from God and they are going to be more harmful depend on how good you are to God and how you see uh, I believe that when we stay away from the Lord we lose protection and he leave us by our own okay he don't want me what I can do and the Lord he will not enforce himself on us he is not from the left who enforce his protection his protection is a choice you want him or you don't want him it's up to you and I believe that the Lord here help us when this man Trump he was elected he is not a man of God but yet he destroyed their plan to take over everything they want is the opposite from what is right I mean I never heard of a country in the world they don't want borders I never heard of any country they want protection so criminals will not jump in their country I never heard of any country anyone can come and ask for welfare I mean this is stupid it's even they don't even but what they care for my friend is just how to win the election they don't care if the country go bankrupt they don't care if if this country became the same as Venezuela look what the socialists did to Venezuela Venezuela is a rich country it's not a poor country is one of the richest country by the oil alone is is is, is amazing but look what happened to Venezuela people that the currency have inflammation of 1 million which mean the price of things increase 1 million time why because it's run by socialist I don't want America to be Venezuela and I don't want Venezuela to be what it is today I pray for this country to finish with the socialist and people they go to live as before since they have this guy the, the, the previous president the one who died by cancer a stupid idiot he opened his borders to Iran and all the terrorists in the world and Hezbollah and he became a friend with the terrorist and the country is coming down and down and down Anyway, we went away from our topic today, which is about the creation of the black man. So I hope today we will, you know, people they learn something good. And feel free, please, you can cut my video about where you think is the most important topic is speaking about this topic and repost it again in your uh, YouTube. Feel free to cut the part which you think it's you know important to reload in your YouTube if you have a channel. And really I appreciate those people there's many people here they are copying my videos and reloading them again all over and I really I appreciate those people and even they are getting more of you more than me which is really amazing and I'm happy for them and as I said <clears throat> I don't care really if the video in my channel get 10,000 and your video your, your channel get 100,000 at the end of the day what I we care for is the message to be delivered not my channel and you there's nothing it's called my channel this is your channel I never thought about my work is as it's work done for my benefit because this is not what it is and this is why always I ask people almost I beg them please download my videos and post them in your channels and I know that will take a lot of people from subscribing to me and people will be confused even where is the guy who's talking where we can find him that is not really the purpose of my work we want people to be educated but if you don't mind when you download my videos and you post them again if you don't mind just post a link says if you want to go and see him live so we can get more people to see us live put a link for my channel the one which is active at the moment where we are 
uh, doing live podcast uh, do we have any Muslim would like to call before we leave <clears throat> Anyone? I look like we are out of them. All right. Well, look like we are done for today, guys. I want to say thank you. May the Lord bless you. And enter. We see you. I I will try to do broadcast tomorrow. Uh, today, uh, yeah, to, tomorrow I think I will do mostly. You will you will notice. You will see. Uh, announcement about it in my YouTube in my Facebook and Patreon Patreon and please don't forget for those who like to learn uh, you can get my books which is in Amazon you can search amazon.com Amazon Germany depend in your country we have a list of books translated to many languages and right now I'm working a book which is uh, in the language of people of Malaysia which I think people of Indonesia they understand the book too uh, and I hope soon we will be able to publish it the book is already translated and is going to be ready soon to be published uh, but it's taking some time because I'm busy with many things but I hope soon I will be able to finish preparing the file for publishing so I want to say thank you guys for being here may the Lord bless you and until we see you soon again Christ is Lord Islam is false and see you soon I mean to that. Bye-bye.